What's up guys, I'm Matt Reisinger. And Brent Hall. And we are in New Orleans. Brent is an amazing architecture tour guide. And <laughs> we've been walking through the French Quarter. Why don't you guys join us for a little bit of a different build show. We're gonna check out some old architecture rather than some new architecture. Let's get going. Hi, right, Brent. We are in the French Quarter, yeah. and this is the famous Jackson Square, yes, right? So exactly. how old is this part of the city? So this is the oldest part of the city. You know, the Mississippi River's right there. Uh, this is where ships would come in. They would trade all time cotton, sugar, certainly were very important trade aspects. You're seeing like uh, 200 years of building here, uh, 17, early 1700s. Okay, so when we're looking at this, this this Louisiana State Museum was probably not a museum at first, was it? No, uh, it was a uh, it was a civic building, right? It was where the the government was. So this is during the Spanish period, about seventeen sixty ish. Uh, you have a, a church right there that was rebuilt in seventeen ninety, but the original one was there in the seventeen twenties. And then these buildings behind us are our Greek Revival, um, so that's eighteen fifties. But I mean, you go from 17 to 18 to in 1900s, all you know within 10 steps of each other. It's freaking, it's an awesome place. It's an awesome place. And of course, Cafe Du Monde was packed. Yes. So we had breakfast over here at, I don't even know what this place was Cajun, called, but it was yeah. amazing. <laughs> you gotta love Cajun food. Yeah. All right, Brian, what's next on the tour? So we're gonna go look at one of the oldest houses, uh, a French uh, officer's house, about 1730 really early house and then we're going to cut across and we're going to go out to the garden district so that's you know 1800s new orleans at its height now the 1850s 1860s we're going to see a ton, a ton of victorian greek revival stuff you know, love it yeah take a walk with us guys let's go hi brand talk to me about these buildings that have these porches are these porches original oh yeah so you know, most of New Orleans is residential, right? And so, or the French Quarter. And then these buildings were added later as, you know, the trade on the, on the river grows. And so these are, you know, civic buildings, right, that have been turned into restaurants and other things. Yep. But uh, you can tell by the height of the building, and that tells you about the age. The lower the building, the earlier it is. And then these taller buildings are after the Louisiana Purchase, after America comes in and we kind of angloized it um, but you see that house right there right so you're seeing a collection of an, a, a, a later house a back house yeah. and then and then a very early house over there that one story right yep. so you got a one two and a three story all right here together and it's interesting you'd think these would be all flat roofs but no they're either hip roofs so you can't see yeah. uh, any over really any overhangs or there's uh, some parapet walls back there. Now, would uh, would some of these doors be carriage doors as well, yes. do you think, back yeah. in the day? Yeah. So like these doors that we're seeing here, they might have pulled their, car their carriage through yeah, so there. This, this house right here, right? This would have been this bay right here or that bay right there where, where individual houses. This would have been the carriage door going right through there. All of these houses have a courtyard in the back. And so you drove the carriage through, there was a courtyard in the back, that's where your stables were, your help lived behind, and then you would be on the front side of the curtain. Yeah, that's wild. I can't even imagine life with horses and carriages. Well, and, there, and, there's, and that, there's, that. there's that courtyard thing. There's these walkthroughs like this, but your courtyard is in the back. That's you know where the horses and stables would have been. Yeah, it's so pretty down here. So Such a walkable city. Yeah. Brent, this looks like an old building. <laughs> so this is one of the earliest houses in New Orleans. So New Orleans is established 1718-ish. This is 1720s. Wow. Uh, this would have been French rule, okay? So the French would have been here. You see some French influence in the way the windows are made. Uh, and what ha would happen, all these shuttered doors right here were actually breeze-throughs that you could actually walk through to the, you know, to the other side of the house. Um, into the work areas of the house, and then you have that piano noble, the, the first floor, which is where living would have happened. And so, this is a you know the windows inside are all casements or French casements. This is a French house in America in the 1720s. Wow, 1720s. That's got to be one of the oldest houses in America, right? Don't you think, Brent? Uh, you know, At least the 16, you know, 
you know, Jamestown 16. Madame John's and Madame John's legacy. Okay, so it was a Louisiana State Museum at one point. Wow, that's neat. And still, I mean, if that wood is 300 years old almost, that's in pretty good shape. It needs a little restoration, though. Think uh, you think Hall Homes could get over here and take care of this for us? <laughs> Got some uh, rotten wood I could help out. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. sure. All right, come here and look at this this street. You're going to see kind of the age of the French Quarter and what's going on here. The uh, look at this down this street, right? And so now we're at the kind of this is the the early colonial stuff, and then you see start seeing Victorian stuff. This is a very so this is Victorian Victorian building. That's an Italianate style uh -huh. house. Okay, you see the brackets and that scroll work. That is all post industrial. You know, th they had to have made that on a machine. And so this is all, you know, 1850s and later. Mm. And then you look down that street and you see the same Italianate kind of over top of that. And these houses and the scale getting smaller as this residential area of, of uh, New Orleans and the French Quarter in particular gets more residential. You look this way and you start to see taller buildings and more civic things. And so anyway, this, this is the way New Orleans was. It was a neighborhood, right, before it became... Mm -hmm. Bourbon Street and everything else, it was where everybody lived. And so we're going to see a real human scale as we walk down this, these streets, much lower, much lower roofs. And, you know, it's just the diversity here uh, from going from 1720s to a Greek revival 1850s to an Italianate 1870s, right? It's just, you know, hundreds of years of difference in architecture all right here. That's amazing. Yeah, it's cool. It's so pretty right here, too. My videos are talking about dormers and the relationship of the size of the dormer to the amount of glass. Notice that these three historic dormers across here, the relationship of glass to the amount of face on the dormer, especially this one here, is about 90% in that the majority is glass. And so you make a mistake when you build a dormer today and you have a huge dormer and a little window and it's only about 20% glass. The historic method is to have mostly glass, and that means you're turning the framing members almost sideways yeah. to get room for the whole sash and everything else to come together. A lot of cool detail in there. Look how dainty it is. It's very small, but the scale of it is right. All right, now, now talk to me about the construction type down here, because in this one block run, I'm seeing, it looks like stucco on wood. This is some kind of, uh, actually I can't tell, is that masonry? And then we've got a brick building down here. What, what were they building with down? So almost everything was brick, okay? Mm -hmm. And then it was stuccoed over. So okay. uh, you would have like this this kind of ashlar kind of looking like stone mm -hmm. is actually stucco and they've, they've scribed ah, so stone that's stucco, marks on not block. Those aren't blocks. And so it's very typical that, you know, everything's brick. Like see all these yeah, bricks here. Yeah, this building's here, all brick. Right? And then, you know, that... That Greek revival building is Greek uh, brick down there. So this was double stock. wide structural brick, probably. Probably triple wide. Triple wide, yeah. and then the the roof framing was probably wood roof framing. Right. And exactly the floor right. joists were led into the brick, probably. That's exactly right. Yeah. Which means that these buildings have lasted really well in this very storm prone area, right? Well, so the French Quarter is a little higher than everything else, and so right, even when Ida and and uh, the other one came through here. The water really never came up much through here, although it flooded the ninth ward or wherever yeah. it was. Yeah, so. but the water wasn't here in the French Quarter yeah. as much because we're a little, high, we're a couple feet higher. So you know, when they were originally here, right, the original settlers in the 1700s built on the highest ground, right. So this they is the do. oldest section, and so yeah. it's natural that they built here. Wow. <laughs> All right, Brent, Bourbon Street. What do we need to say about Bourbon Street? Anything interesting here going on? Uh, a lot of distractions down here. It is a little crazy in here. <laughs> there is some interesting architecture, though. Yeah, no, they're really old buildings and uh, great courtyards and great... Uh, no, 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 preservation on Bourbon So seeing, my, my thought is, seeing all of the wrought iron here, yeah. there must have been a big industry for... Wrought iron parts. Like I wonder if that was an off-the-shelf part that some builder went to the store and grabbed uh, the wrought iron pieces for railing. Well, like absolutely. That. absolutely. I mean, for the, the the iron industry and the iron craftsmanship in New Orleans is unique. There are books about some of the great black uh, uh, 
metal workers who were used working in wrought iron uh -huh. and not necessarily cast iron, it was cast iron later. Oop. And by the 1850s, you would have whole catalogs of these things, and you can see these parts and these you know popular design ideas, especially in that fret work and the, and the porch work around you know so much of New Orleans like this one coming up. Yep. Um, you know, it's all absolutely would have been available in the catalog. Absolutely, you would have ordered a part. Yeah. Now, there's some dormers that look like you were talking about a minute ago that were uh, a little uh, smaller framing and bigger glass. Yeah. And that's a little one-story uh, building, so it needed that light on that second story, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, Bourbon Street. Yeah. And next up, trolley to the Garden District. Two beautiful companions today, my wife Christy and Brent's wife Chrissy. Okay, y'all, we're in Magazine Street, uh, and something that stands out for me in this city is new buildings. Oh, I, the modern architecture with the old, with the uh, old, I just don't get. And this modern one also was built badly. Look at this stucco overhang, no weep, and you can see that they fixed this corner several times. So. Obviously, the building science wasn't there as well. Anyways, let's see what else Magazine Street has to uh, to offer us. Brent and Chrissy walked ahead, so I don't know what to tell you about the style of the building, but I can tell you that these buildings are really cute. Looks like the same architect, maybe same builder on these two. Ooh, look, we can see that's crawl space down there too. Old wood clapboard siding. This is a store, it looks like my wife went in. Let's go have a look. What a beautiful building. How fun would it be to live in a place like this? Gorgeous. Don't you wish you could meet the original builder of a place like this? Oh man, all real painted wood. This looks like, if not original windows, restored windows. Big double hungs, ornate, beautiful woodwork. Oh, what a cool building. Oh yeah, I like that too. That's really pretty. Okay, we just got off the trolley. We are in the Garden District. Brent, what do we need to know about the Garden District? Well, I mean, look at this. It's a garden, right? You got azaleas and... Literally is the Garden District. <laughs> and look at this mansion. <laughs> yeah, so you see, you're seeing a lot of cast iron, right? Uh, a lot of Greek revival details in there. So that whole entablature and that whole decoration and stuff is typical. Uh, 1857. Oh my. So that would be, you know, Greek Revival style house. So great details. Very beautiful. So who do you think these people were that built these houses? I mean, you, so these have this... been rich merchants who were, you know, basically trading downtown, down by the river, and then they would build as the city grew by the peak periods, 1850, right before the Civil War. This would have been, you know, rich merchants' house. And I have to read that. And where did, where did New Orleans fare in terms of American cities in the, you know, yeah, 1850? So, yeah, in, in like 1850s, it is the uh, sixth or seventh largest city, and it's and it's really during the time that the East Coast cities, New York, Baltimore, Boston, all their big cities. Then you have Cincinnati, Buffalo, Chicago, New Orleans, and St. Louis, all Western, you know, cities that are growing up because of the Mississippi River. Right, St. Louis is on the Missouri and Mississippi where they connect. Cincinnati, because of a canal, is on the Mississippi. Chicago, because of a canal, is on the Mississippi. Mississippi's it, right? New Orleans being at the base of that, it is the, you know, hot spot, right? And so yeah. this is a rocking town, very influential. Uh, Wealthy. Steamboats are able to go up the Mississippi River, which allows all those things happening. So between canals, railroads, not quite yet, and the Mississippi River, these towns are boom towns. That's wild. And then you get houses like this. Yeah. These people had some money. Yeah, this guy's showing off as well. Yeah. The Garden District. We took the uh, trolley through here and saw some amazing houses as we as we travel through but Brent what's is there a typical style here is there a little bit of everything well so you there's a little bit of everything and it doesn't seem to be a zoning pattern either right you see apartment buildings next to really pretty houses mm -hmm. there's a Queen Anne house it's next a, to a very international modern apartment right? Oof, that is ugly <laughs> so all these things are getting built at different time periods 
This is this is definitely not uh, worthy of the garden district right here. That was like 50s. The beautiful trees that line this deal. Yeah. With all these great live oaks running down here. It's then, gorgeous. You know, all right, let's uh, let's keep walking. We'll see what else we can find in the garden district. Oh, check this one out, Brand. What is this? This suit also is pre right? So you can tell because of the see the splay jam. You see that splayed uh, on the side of the door uh -huh. how that splays out. Yeah. So 1854, right? Just a little bit earlier than that other one. Not quite as nice. The, the ornamentation and detail aren't as high, but it's still, you know, shows off the wealth of the city in the 1850s, for sure. Yeah, and then right next door to it, look how ornate this house is. I don't know if you can see it, but check out the mold. It looks like mold girth on that. Uh, uh, it's going to be hard to tell on video, but it looks like some mold girth on that. Porch yeah, ceiling and underneath that soffit area is a little bit here too. Someone told us yesterday when we were in Baton Rouge that uh, Baton Rouge gets 67 inches of rainfall annually. What do you think uh, New Orleans gets, Brent? We got to be somewhere in that same. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, this is almost a tropical environment here. What a beautiful house. It's gonna be hard to see on video because some of these areas look shadowy to me, but. Like if you could zoom up and see the scroll work under that soffit, it's it's just they spent so much money and time and effort in places that you don't normally see when you're walking the street. And then another beautiful example right next door. So what you've seen too is all this ornate millwork with the carving and the brackets and the turnings mm -hmm. are all a product of a industrialized mill shop that can do steam powered, you know, machinery. That saw cutting, that's shaping, molding, all these things that used to be have to be done by hand are now done by machines. And so you see this explosion of woodwork on these houses because we can, right? Yeah. Not because because you didn't have to have a do. master carver yeah, from was, Poland it, it to was, do it. <laughs> it was exciting, right? It was uh, exciting to those craftsmen to not have to spend all their time planing wood. It came out of a molder or, or planer, completely ready to go. And beautiful. They could spend more of their time building and uh -huh. doing crazy stuff, and they did. Yeah. That's so neat. Don't you wish those catalogs were still available for us today? Well, that's what I've collected. I, I love them. They're, they're a fascinating look into the past. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brent, talk to me about this railing on this house. All right, so the magic of you know cast iron work, right? All of these things are you know, pre-made parts, right? Well, and they're bolted or, or welded together, mm -hmm. right? But they're all cast. There's nothing plastic here. And these are all, right, this you can it. see the, the rivets and the pieces coming through. And then did someone make these special or do you think that came out of a catalog well, as well? Well, you can see where the seam is here, right? And so this would have been poured into, but this would have been definitely in the catalog, but the way they would have made it is to actually pour it into a mold. Um, and so, I mean, and look at the house that it's uh, in front of, too. What a yeah, gorgeous you know, house. I mean, what a funky-looking finial, right? I mean, that's uh -huh. that's weird-looking. It is weird-looking. So, uh, But you see that kind of stuff, that it wasn't about necessarily the design of it, but look what we can do. And, uh, yeah. And is this wood, or is this stucco that's on this house? That's, that's a good question. Of... It's wood. You it's can wood. See, oh, you yeah, see there the, you the seams on it which wasn't unheard of for them to do that. Look at the panel ceiling underneath the, the porch oh, there. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And this is again in the front entryway. This is probably 1850s. This is right at the heart of the city's wealth. Yeah. All right, next up, y'all, Brent's got us going to Architectural Salvage. We'll meet you there. Hi, Brent. Check this building out across the street. There's all the steel going on. What's happening on this building? So there's a rule called demolition by neglect, which you, means you can't just let your old building fall down because you think the land's worth more than the building. So they are making them, they require them to keep it standing until the development happens, right? And development is slowly coming here and, uh, you know, holding it up until they can afford to That's fix wild. it up. Steel, wild. steel beams on a 45 to hold this facade up. A bunch of steel across that looks like it's through bolted through the building probably a triple y the brick building and look at the cool details on the top it looks like there might even been a suspect, clock or something up top the there roof isn't in there anymore and i suspect that the floors may not even be in there ah. and so all of the framing that would have held it together is kind of falling away got it 
And right behind us is what? We're at the bank. And so the bank is an architectural salvage yard in New Orleans. We're going to see a bunch of awesome stuff in here. All right. I've never been. Let's see what we got. Oh, wow. Check it out, Brent. These look like new shutters here, though. Better made to look like old shutters. We're making based on the past, right? We're still doing the through tenons, right? But uh, yes, they're using old cypress and peeling Spanish cedar. I can smell it. Have you bought stuff from these guys before? I have. And so what you see, like, look at this. This is a great French door, right? This, this design is Victorian. This, this design is Victorian, right? You see that cap? So this is all from the 1850s, 1860s. This is what would have been typically found in the catalog. These are doors that have been salvaged. Look at that tight green cypress, right? Ooh. That is tidewater red cypress, right? It's just awesome stuff that lasts forever. And so, do they strip the store before they, they sold it so that they can? you can tell? Because yeah. that doesn't seem like that would come out of a house like yeah. that. They got a price tag of $1,400 on that door. Wow. So, but, they're, but this is a long pine door. And, uh, but you see all these different sizes, and we'll see, you know, Victorian stuff, arts and crafts stuff. We'll see all kinds of cool stuff in here. Tin ceilings. Oh, man. Tiles, wow. Lighting. Do you have any projects going now, Brent, that you would uh, use something out of here for? Well, we try, we try to use them on architecture. The problem is, look how thin this door is, right? That's probably, well, it says 23 inches, right? So front doors would have been it's four <laughs> foot wide, right? You can't really open this door and go sideways uh -huh. through it, You have right? to open both doors. So the scale of our houses has grown, so we don't, it's hard to use architectural salvage like this because it's so thin. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. it is great stuff. No right? 3 doors in here, are there? Right. Here you're going to see a whole bunch of different mantles, and so all kinds of Victorian millwork, right? This is all turnings, right? This would have been a screen. This would have been something that would have been put together, but it has to be made in the Victorian period. Look at some of this detail here. All of this kind of dainty things that would have been made over and over again in a machine, all these moldings, this kind of beading on this kind of the scroll saw that would have cut this out. This is all Victorian, right? This is all them very, being very excited about mm. what they can make and building things like this. And there's, you know, 50, uh, mantles here that have come out of the houses that we just kind of saw, mm -hmm. but uh, these are very simple mantles, right? These are workmen's house mantles, so this kind of decoration is not super high end. Those okay. guys would have had cast iron, they would have marble, they would have had mm -hmm. other more expensive stuff. Mm -hmm. This is working man mantle, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. One of the ways you can date doors, right, is by looking at the moldings. Okay, this is a classic Greek revival molding, okay? This is when it's very wide, it projects, drops, and, and steps back. Yep. That is Greek revival. I mean, just, and this one's Greek revival. Then you go over to a door like this, and it actually has no panel mold. It is actually has a, st it's stuck, right? It has it's this, molded this, into yeah, the style. This, which is called a, a, a bead and cove design. Mm -hmm. And then this low profile, this is a 1920s door, okay? Mm. And you see that six panel, and then, then back over here, five panel door, right? This, this kind of orientation and stuff, this profile changes, right? It's not just a step up. Greek revival, flat panel, right? This, this door has a raised panel, but it's a rate, it's kind of a, an OG raised panel, right? And it's not just a kick up. All these little, little details that I noticed that this door, 1900, this door is 1870s, this door is 1910, wow. right? All different. It's amazing when you can details. figure that out, Brent. I would it's never cool. know that. Let's go see if we can see some hardware. Okay, right, hardware. Uh, remember, uh, I don't know if you've talked about the windows, but these are all window weights. Yeah, okay? all weights from these the window wells. The, and then we window talking, sashes. We're talking about the ironwork and all the uh, cast iron pieces that would go on these fence So rails. many. Right, a lot of cast iron. These are all cast iron iron places, okay? So these would have been fire surrounds, mm -hmm. gone in a chimney and been in there. What are these, Brent? This looks like a whistle. It is a whistle. Is it really? No, it's a... It's a uh, what is that? There's some teeth in there. I have no idea what that is. And there's a bunch of them right here, in different sizes. Is it from an organ, maybe? <laughs> it is. <laughs> organ, good call. <laughs> hey, I figured it out. That's cool. Wow. That's really cool. So could you take this hardware from, from this random bin and turn this into somebody's lock set? Yeah, and so all of these are different periods, right? And so you see this stuff here? See, anything like this, that decorative kind of Look detail where you see all that engraving, that's 
classic 1870s into the 1890s Victorian stuff. And then this thing is Beaux-Arts, right? Because you see a little wreath up there. You see a little swag. Um, this is a little bit more classical. And then, and then they rejected the Victorianism after the arts and crafts period. And you end up with a, just a very simple, very plain. plain thing here. So you can actually date these things, too. Oh, yeah, look at that. Art Deco. Art Deco, right? And I'm assuming this is a mock-up just to show you what we can do. But look how pretty this arbor is. Yeah, so this is a rim lock, right? So before they before they put door in, door, mortise blocks in, they did ah, rim locks. Rim so locks. the rim lock is actually sitting as a rim on the outside of your door. I've never seen that before. Yeah. Is that a popular style, or was that? Well, it was it was a very standard door hardware uh, in the 1870s because mortise locks didn't become common until like 1900. Huh. But look at how ornate these are. Wow. So you know those are earlier, right? They're beautiful. And then we are talking about those rim locks. These are all mortise locks. These are mortise locks, right? And this mortise lock would have gone on a pair of doors where they where they swung together. And it had, you know, uh, it had an escutcheon that would have met the other side that would have been stepped like that so that the door came, came together. This is very hard to find these days. Wow. And look at these beautiful knobs too. And and do the knobs tell you any periods? Like I'm seeing some knobs that are cast iron. Uh, is this actually? Yeah, and the, the mineral knobs and these different whites. And the whites would oftentimes be used in bathrooms, but sometimes oh, people would actually get these. And mm. sometimes you can see them, they actually have a lot of mineraling in them. Um, are, were these painted? And the, this is actually? They were painted and they've stripped them. Okay. Wow, that's really neat. You know what these are? Oh, that's, that's your uh, pulley for the yeah, window, right? For a double that, hung? Yeah. No, that is a monster. That is a monster. That big. That's a big window. As we're walking on a Banks Architectural Savage, Brent shows me that somebody's bringing a load of windows in from probably something that's getting restored or torn down or something. That's kind of that's kind of neat to see. The Bank Architectural, Antiques, Cypress Doors, Mantle, Shutters, and more. They don't want to take it down. No, they don't. What fell off of it the other day? Yeah, that's why they put a net around it. But see how close it is to the Superdome? This is a prime yeah, spot here. You'd think they'd want to. The oldest skyscraper in New Orleans. In Louisiana. Yeah, in that's Louisiana, why, rather. That's why it's historic. But it hasn't been uh, it's not occupied in two decades. <laughs> yeah, decades. Yeah, and right. something yeah. fell and hit a biker yesterday? Is that yeah, what you said? Yeah. Dang. What a piece of, of, of the top part. Oh my gosh, that's so dangerous. That's so yes. dangerous. Great time while you're here. Thank, Thank you. you. You had fun at your birthday party. Thank you. All right, Brent. It's time to uh, take a little nap before our nighttime <laughs> dinner. <laughs> We're at the Roosevelt. We're getting old. This nap been, sounds pretty good. Nap sounds pretty good, that's for sure. It's so fun to tour with you today, man. It was awesome. What a cool city. Yeah, man. it's a tons of history here. Yes. Tons of great architectural stuff. A lot of wealth in the 1850s made it, you know, stuff for us to look at and be inspired by. Some beautiful buildings. Yeah. Guys, if you're not following Brent, uh, I'll put a link to his Instagram feed below. He's posting all kinds of stuff there, but go watch his videos over on buildshownetwork.com. Brent's an incredible craftsman who builds new houses that look really old and also restores really old buildings back to their new glory. Yeah. Uh, just an amazing guy. So I'm so thankful for your friendship, brother. Thanks yeah. for hanging out with me this weekend. Awesome. And if you haven't seen it, we published another video from a house that Brent and I have been working on kind of remotely in Baton Rouge uh, for a guy named Larry who's just building an incredible house, a house that has incredible building science and incredibly beautiful as well yeah, and it's really, really Larry's house is going to look like an old house as well yeah no about. it's going to be awesome for it's sure really great all right guys it's fun follow me on twitter and instagram otherwise we'll see you next time on the build show